Welcome to College Place. We're so glad you're here. Will you uh, join with us in our opening song and stand if you're able? Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us, for we need your strength from day to day. join responsibly in our call to worship. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. We long to follow you. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us. We long to feast at your table of mercy. Gentle shepherd, come be with us. We long for your kingdom to come.
may be seated. Let us unite our hearts and minds together in our opening prayer. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate our Lord's resurrection by the renewing of your spirit arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this day comes from Psalm 23, a familiar text to us, but today I'll read it from the New Revised Standard Version. So open and, uh, and listen with new ears to this reading. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in pe- right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And let us stand as we're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Listen now for the word of God. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know where the voice of strangers. Jesus used this as a figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. The choir is going to sing a song today written by a professor at Greensboro College using some of the words from scripture, so we wanted you to hear the words before they sing. Because the world is poor and starving, go with bread. Because the world is filled with fear, go with courage. Because the world is in despair, go with hope. Because the world is living lies, go with truth. Because the world is sick, with sorrow, go with joy. Because the world is weary of wars, go with peace. Go into the world to share the love of God, and as you go, remember the words of our Lord. As you've done unto the least of these, you do unto me. So if you love me, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. If you love me, tend to my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. Because the world is seldom fair, go with justice. Because the world is under judgment, go with mercy. Because the world will die without it, go with love.
Well, it's awful hard for me to see myself preaching to you about how wonderful a shepherd we have standing behind a whole bunch of wood. I love Fred Craddock's line. He always says they take whatever construction materials they have when they build a church and pile it up front and call it a pulpit. Uh, and we do, we kind of get that. But we have a shepherd and we have uh, such beautiful music and reminders of God's peace. It just seems fitting that I'm down here with y'all just a little closer. There was a time in life, some of us may recall, when the phone rang and you didn't know who was on the other end. Much less did your phone tell you who it was calling or if it was spam or even what area code it was from. Every call that came through sounded just like the other. And it was a real bell in a lot of the phones, not some synthesized electronic bell. It was a real bell somehow. In the, and I never have taken a phone apart. Bob, I don't want to know how this works, but you probably have. But you know, I've, I, I should probably go to like Habitat and find one of the old phones and take it apart just to see how it works. Maybe there's a YouTube video for it. But there was a time when every phone call that rang sounded the same. And you didn't know until you picked it up who it might be on the other end of the phone. And yet at the same time, once the person said hello, oftentimes you would know exactly who it was. A family member, a friend, a loved one, or somebody you had never heard of. They, we still had telemarketers back then, way back then, too. But to know the sound of the person that's on the other end of the line that you can't even see. It sounds fitting for this passage of Scripture, the very idea of the shepherd, of the good shepherd, of the sheep being able to recognize his voice, follow his, his direction and command to go where his voice calls them. The good shepherd. I love one of the hidden gems of College Place is the Good Shepherd window that hides in the stairwell as you go down this hall in the old section when you look up and depending on the morning sun, it looks beautiful. There are days that oftentimes when I go through the building, I kind of wander through the building just to see what changes. We have a hundred plus year old building. Things change when you turn the heat on, the little pipes leak. When you turn the air conditioning on, some pipes might leak. When it rains in weird places, then you know that there's leak. It's welcome to College Place. It's all part of the fun. So I kind of take a wander through the building from time to time. And oftentimes I'll head up that stairwell and come across if I'm going over to make sure the computers are off or that the doors are closed or something like that. And I get to look straight on to that Good Shepherd window in the hallway. Jesus is there. You've seen it. Even if you haven't seen that one, you've seen one but like it in some church over the years. Jesus is sitting there holding a little lamb, looking down at it. The thing I love about stained glass is that it sets our minds right to be able to ponder and to look at something in a different way. I mean, the stained glass, I always say, was the early churches or the, uh, the, the middle-aged church chartlet. They told stories, the, the ark, the beehive, the grapes, Alpha and Omega. You could see these things in those windows and you would know what they meant, even if you couldn't read about them. But Jesus standing there holding that little lamb in the hallway window, when I look down at that, I, I see, well, there are days I see, well, it just depends on how I'm feeling sometimes. I think Jesus is looking at that poor little sheep like Jesus sometimes looks at me and says, oh, mercy, you've done it again. Can't you get your act together? I can't believe you doing that over and over again. You know this is, doesn't end well. There's some days I hear that message. And then there are other days that I say, wow, 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 poor Jason. You need all my love and support and forgiveness and encouragement. I know you might be tired, might be weary, but I'm here for you. Oh, the good shepherd, the one that provides for the sheep, the one who carries them into safe places, 
to offer good food and protection. You know, I don't know a lot about sheep herding. I, I've studied it over the years, but there are options. There are different ways that it was done in the ancient world. One that might be fitting today would be that, that Jesus is the gate. There would be some kind of holding pen, especially at night to keep animals around. The sheep would be herded into those holding pens. And oftentimes the shepherd, instead of just being there, sitting there like looking, would actually sleep across the gate. Like perhaps this could be the gate and the shepherd would just lay down there. The good thing is if anything came into the sheep herd, the shepherd would be the first to know it. Or if the sheep tried to get a little raucous and go back out on a Friday night, that the shepherd knew it. They're laying, laying on the ground, resting and yet working at the same time. to very care for the sheep in, in the way that only a true shepherd does. A loyal shepherd, a loving shepherd, the good shepherd. To lay in harm's way for us. I don't know, that sounds fitting for Easter, for a story of Easter when we've just heard of Jesus' crucifixion on the cross when the way of peace and love and hope in the world was too much for the world, when the power of forgiveness was revealed for all the world through the work on the cross, when those on earthly powers thought they had overcome his horrible teachings, put him into a tomb, rolled the stone away, and said, that's enough of that, Jesus was resurrected. Jesus, the dead Jesus, is alive on Easter to bring about the power of the resurrection into the world. A reminder that God's power is so strong and wonderful and capable that even death is not too big of a challenge. Jesus, the resurrected Christ, the good shepherd for us. We're kind of in the middle of Easter. You know, it, I've said over and over again, I'm glad Easter's not just one Sunday. It's too much for our brains to process at one time. It takes a while to fully reveal and understand what and how God's love is revealed to the resurrected Christ in the world for us. We need time to slow down and to listen. to hear where the Good Shepherd is saying, or to hear what the Good Shepherd is saying to us in this time and in this day. I am the Good Shepherd. Lay down my life for the sheep. I am the gate. No one who comes in without coming through the gate is a thief and abandoned. Ha! Ah. I love it. Trying to sneak in through a different way. So only Jesus is the gate to open it up for us so that we may enter in. We will come in through the gate, through the front door. None of us have to go in through the side door. Not into Jesus' heart, into God's family. Come in through the front door all the time. Well, that's at least the way I've understood Jesus' love to be. I, I, I'm beginning to think I get it wrong. I really do. I, I, I think that, 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 you know, welcoming people through the front door into God's house, into God's kingdom, into God's family is, 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 a, is a bygone notion, it seems, in some places. I guess you saw the article this week. You heard about it some more. This Saturday coming up, we'll disaffiliate 191 last count churches across Western North Carolina conference. And the reason that they are disaffiliating is because they, I mean, this is paragraph 22553, I think it is. 
is they just don't want to welcome people into the church, God's people, because they choose to love someone of their same gender. That's it. That's what you have to do if you're disaffiliating. That's the reason. I just don't know. You know, throughout church history, I, I just have heard over and over again that part of what is happening is that God is revealing God's self to the world around us. Jesus came first to the Jewish people. Oh, to teach in the synagogue, to do battle with religious leaders that were sought in their ways, observing in the letter of the law. And Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden. Jesus went out from, from Jerusalem into the whole world. Jesus was resurrected saw his disciples, was lifted up, taken up into heaven, and through the gift of the Spirit, was, the disciples were sent out into the whole world. The Gospel of John, part of what it's saying to us and to the world is, is that it's not just about those who are the Jewish faith that Jesus came for, but it's, it's, it's more people. Jesus is inviting us to go out into the world to share his love with them. And the arms of the church over history continue to get wider and wider and wider. Oh, in the ancient Roman church, you know, I mean, I mean military people couldn't be members of the church. What? That's an, an, an anathema to us. People who serve and protect the country. No, you couldn't be it in the early church. Artists couldn't be a part of the church. What? People who create wonderful art couldn't be at the church. No, they were employed by the government to make graven images of the emperors on their coins. Artists could not be a part of the church. Nope, nope, gotta go. And yet, throughout history, there have been continued times where, where people have been denied admission into the church. And slowly, by slowly, by slowly, the church's doors become open. Oh, for some of us, that's much too slow of an opening of a door. I mean, it's like those... those uh, electric doors that, that they used to have down here at the old CVS before they redid them. You know, you could walk up to that thing and it seemed like it took a week and a half for it to open. And it made a horrible grounding sound the whole time. I started to take WD-40 down there and see if I could help it. It eventually got open. Oh, it was so frustrating. I just wanted to go get what I wanted in the, in the drugstore and leave. I had stuff to do. I didn't have to, you know, when you got in, you had to wait for it to open that slowly to get out. I was so glad when they redid those doors. So they'd go ahead and open up. Welcome people. So people could come in and be nurtured and sustained. The doors could go ahead and open up so that people could go out into the world. That's what I understand the church is to be. The umbrella of God's love continues to be more inclusive and inviting and enveloping into the whole world. I, in my sought in the old ways thinking sometimes, does not limit what God can do. I may not be fully understanding what's going on, but because I'm not where somebody else is, that, 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 that I have done, that it's going to stay the same to suit me. Nope. God's heart transforms my heart, not my heart, my understanding transforms God's. Somewhere recently I've seen that, that if, 
your understanding of God is your understanding of what God should be, and there's no kind of places in which you and God are in tension one with another, then, then God hasn't transformed you. You transform God. The challenge for us through these waters of baptism that welcome, that include, that wash away sin, that invite us into God's family, they welcome us, each of us. And because of that welcome and that experience of God's love, we're called to share that same love with the whole world around us, with the same spirit that God invites us to follow. Yeah, I know. I said, Preacher, have you listened to the news this week? Violence, 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 violence. Have you driven around town, people, people driving crazy? You know, it, it just, well, it makes the preacher not want to say nice things. Well, I mean, you know, there's a part of us that are called to, to share God's love with the world, and evidently some of us have missed that mark, have missed that calling, have missed that invitation. Violence turns into an answer, and we, we understand. I mean, we've got a great example of what violence in the world does to try to, to, to hinder the very work of God. Putting Jesus on the cross did not shut his way down, did not shut his love down, did not shut his peace down. It opened it up to all the world. The story we still understand and experience 2,000 years later. But part of us, because we're in on that fold of sheep that are loved by the shepherd, that the continued transformation of our heart and our lives continues to take place, we don't get everything perfect. We're not going to. We're humans. And yet at the same time, through God's grace working in our lives, we understand that God transforms our living and helps us to more reflect God in the world and how we interact one with another. Pope Francis this morning, you know, there are some good things about technology. I'm not going to fuss at all of it. And there's even some good stuff about Twitter. Pope Francis has a Twitter account, and I love to follow it up. This morning in, in his sermon, he, 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 he wrote this, or, or it was posted on Twitter as a result from his sermon. It said, Each of us is precious to Jesus. Remember that no one can take your place in the history of the church and the world. No one else can do what only you can do. So let's help each other to believe that we are loved and precious, that we are made for great things. Because of God's love residing in our hearts, caring for us, loving us, that we're called to be God's love, to spread God's love in the world around us. All glory, honor, and power be to the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Today, as we sing our hymn of response, we have the opportunity to come forward to pray for healing for ourselves, for each other, and for our world. You may come and be anointed and then pray at the altar and then be there for the prayer as we sing. All are welcome to come.
God of love, open our hearts and our minds today as we hear your word proclaimed. May we freely receive your grace so that we might give it to others in this world. Help us to hear your voice as our good shepherd. As today we pray for the world, for places in war and unrest, for the people of Ukraine and the war that rages there, for the refugees and immigrants who are fleeing war and violence, we pray for peace. We also pray for people in our own country and for our leaders. We pray for places in our country where gun violence continues to ring out. We pray for those who are targeted by hate and racism and bigotry. We pray for those living in fear. Help us, O oh God, to lay down our weapons of war. Help us, O oh God, to overcome the hatred in our hearts. Help us to seek justice and righteousness in this life, in this world. We pray for those in our city, for those who struggle to live with home and food, for those who need support and safety. We pray for those who need care and love and resources. Help us to reach out to those in need. And we particularly pray for those at Peck Elementary School, for those teachers and students that we support with our prayers and our offering and our gifts. May they know our love for them so they may fully continue to learn and grow in their lives. And we pray for the college students and university students who are here and in our community, for all those who are ending this semester, for all those who are going to new places this summer, for those who are graduating, we pray your blessing upon them that they may go forth from this place showing your love to the world. And we pray for our church, for this church in the United Methodist Church, for those who may be leaving, for those who are staying. Help us to continue to be a lighthouse in this place, to be a place of safety and refuge for those who need a home. Help us to be a place that welcomes those who are lonely, those who mourn, those who are oppressed. Open our eyes to the needs of those around us and help us to become as you call us to be, to follow your voice, to follow your way, to live more boldly into your kingdom. And we pray all this in the power and the name of Jesus, who loves us, sustains us with the gift of the Holy Spirit, who taught us how to follow in the way of love as we pray together the prayer he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. The technology, I've been talking about it. Is that what's going on? Did we figure anything out? Sit down, maybe? Okay. Every day is an adventure. <laughs> it worked so good just a few minutes ago. Now it's, it's up somewhere. The gain somewhere is crazy. Oh, oh this is just horrible. Number one, ah, uh, well, that doesn't sound quite as scary. <laughs> um, Beth, you're, are you headed out of town? That's what I thought. Come on up. I just want to recognize you just a minute, and you can tell, talk to us. Uh, Beth is a graduating senior, and she's headed to bigger and better things. You want to tell us about it? Sure. Sure. Sorry, I was not prepared for this. Uh, you gotta be ready to preach, eat, and move. Yeah, I guess. All right, yeah, I'm graduating from uh, UNCG on Friday, and afterwards, uh, next year, I will be going to seminary at Candler School of Theology at Emory, uh, and I am seeking uh, to 
a master's in divinity uh, to head to the, down the elder track of uh, ordination. That's wonderful. So as Beth heads off to school, we want to uh, say a, a quick prayer, but a long lasting prayer over you. Let us pray together. Gracious Holy God, we ask that you go with Beth to remind her of your love and your grace in her life and to keep the call fresh in her heart this day and forever. We ask, O oh God, that you continue to watch over her, to protect her and to guide her as she goes forth in service to your church in the world. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Good to see you. Blessings. And you can't go away and stay. You just go, get to go travel. I am still a member of this church. That's it. That's it. Beth is still a member of the church. That's awesome. Speaking of members of the church, uh, Pam, I'll invite you to come forward. Pam was like, what? I'm not a member? <laughs> Gets confusing. Pam has been among us for a long time, uh, and as she wishes to join officially as a member, one of the things that we wanted to do was for her to have an opportunity to reaffirm her baptismal vows. So we have the water here. We will pour it in. This is good old-fashioned Greensboro City water. The water's just plain, but the God's Spirit anoint this water and to bless it that those who receive it may hear and be reminded of your call and your place in their family, in your family, O oh God, that you may anoint and remind us always of your presence with us as you have claimed us through our baptisms. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Pam does reaffirming her baptismal vows, so in that we will invite her to, to dip her fingers into the water. Just dip in, go ahead. Well, just, just a couple of them. Dip it in, yeah. Well, any, you just do it, you just pick it. You do, do, yeah, okay, that's good. Go on the Peter route. My hands and my feet and all of me. And touch it to your forehead to remember your baptism and be thankful. And the Holy Spirit continue to work within you that having been born through the water and the Spirit, that you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Okay. Pam, I'll ask you as a member of the Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. And as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and witness? I extend to you the right hand of fellowship. Welcome to College Place United Methodist Church as a member. We're so well, glad to have you. Good to be here. Thank you, Miles, for being here today. We are thankful for the members of our community and those who are worshiping with us. And we're so thankful that you're with us in line or in person as we do ministry together here at College Place. If this is your first time, there's a welcome card to put into the offering plate. If you're a college student, there's a bright neon card. Our Sunday night live worship is now on pause because students are leaving, graduating, and it'll be on pause until August when students return to campus. Um, Sunday mornings we'll still have small groups for students and for Sunday school at 945. And uh, you're also invited if you'd like to join the choir this summer to help sing. Um, it practices Sundays at 1015 usually, but you can get connected with Susan if you'd like to join us. Um, for April, the United Women of Faith are asking us to support the Servant Center of Greensboro, which is a, a place for homeless and disabled, especially veterans, transition to independent living. So we're trying to support them in their work. Um, you can donate some things like toiletry items or socks or t-shirts um, and uh, donations if you'd like and mark the envelopes with Servant Center and we'll get that to them. Thanks to all those who created flood buckets and provided for those. We've created six full flood buckets, I think it is. Is that right, six? And so we are sending those off to the United Methodist Committee on Relief. They will go to places of, in devastation and those people in need. And so thank you for supporting that project. 
All of these are ways that we seek God to serve, serve, to seek God and serve God in this community. And we have the opportunity to give to God a part of what God has given to us. You're invited to give in the offering place at the church entrance. You can get invited to give online on our QR code in the bulletin or on the donate button. And uh, all these ways are supporting the ways that we work together in ministry here on this corner of Tate Street and Spring Garden. I invite you now as you're able, if you're willing, to stand with us as we give thanks and sing our doxology. join together in our modern affirmation. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, a gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in the time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in this presence of self set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen.
people of faith go forth renewed in the Holy Spirit through the resurrected Christ by God's power almighty. Go forth into the world to love and serve God in all that you do. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.